Hey, everybody, we're back. Look, we're together in person, all four of us, nice and cozy for your camera. So today's video is all about some of our leadership roles and how it's changing dynamics within our teams or the people we serve. We just want to have a conversation because we actually have a lot going on, all four of us. Not all of what you're going to know in this video, but just know we have a lot to share going forward. So I want to say hi, Harks. Hi. Hello. Liana, Alex and Jen. Jen. <laughs> So I know we talked about this video because Jen, you specifically said, now that you're not seeing clients, things have changed. You want to start us off with what you noticed? Yeah, yeah. So um, so what I did is I started a group practice several years ago. And then as it grew, I quickly became aware of the fact that I cannot have a full caseload and manage a team um, effectively or just, you know, I have a vision for what I want and I wasn't able to do it. I didn't, there's, there's only so many hours in the day. So um, I started just kind of um, stepping back with my clients and then eventually I just had to make a hard stop and let my clients know that I was transitioning to a different role. Um, the things that really stood out the most for me is that I have had very much adopted the therapist time schedule in my brain where things happen in 15 minute increments. And so not having a structured you know, like I, I still check every 15 minutes, I should be switching gears to do something else. So going from very much an appointment based, you know, kind of work lifestyle to project based now is hard. Um, I didn't realize I, you know, had ADD until I started this. Now it's super apparent. Um, so that was, that was the first thing that I just really, really noticed was how to manage my time. Um, because I was so used to just having it structured and managed for me. And then, um, you know, kind of when I did all this was on the tail end of everybody coming back from the pandemic and come like returning to the office. And so the second thing that um, I really, this is more kind of a recent um, notice, I guess, is that um, I can work from home a lot. I can do a lot of the things that I need to do from home, but I need to have a presence here in the office still. Um, I found that my team was kind of, um, I don't really know how to explain it, but I, I needed to be here. I need to kind of be, um, I don't know. I don't know if anyone else has a better word for it, but like my presence in the office was missing. And it's weird for me because when I am here, I'm usually just in my office, maybe with my door closed, having meetings or doing the same things I do at home. But, you know, just those little interactions, which were the things that we missed during the pandemic, right? Yeah. Of checking in with people in between sessions and just like, you know, jokes and things like that. Um, that the atmosphere, the environment was really different. And so that's something that, um, was really missing in my group that I needed to really show up as a leader. Have you seen a positive shift? As a yeah, yeah. I mean, I think first I saw kind of a negative shift. It's like, what's going on here? What's happening? Um, and so, yes, now that I'm kind of restructuring that a little bit, I do see more of a positive shift for sure. Yeah, I have great people on my team. And so, you know, yeah. So, Alex, what would you add to this, knowing that things are pivoting for you? Um, I think for me, the pivot, it's almost like I've been preparing for it, but it never, I never said, like, on this date, on this time, it's happening. Um, so, <laughs> it, I mean, it's like I put it out in the universe, and I, I mean, I was talking to you guys about it, and then all of a sudden, for me, it was like, it's here. It's here. Um, and <clears throat> sometimes... I think um, kind of to piggyback on what Jen said, um, the mentality of uh, the, the leadership role is very diverse, but I think you when you get stuck in one specific role and you want to diversify or pivot, it almost seems like you're being unloyal to the role. And um, I think that's where I struggle with loyalty within um, my role as um, a director, as an owner. And I think um, being able to give yourself permission to pivot and to uh, give yourself permission to make mistakes and learn and be okay with it. I think that, uh, that's one of the biggest things that I think um, I've been learning from stepping back. Like th there is no manual for dummies <laughs> or like for pivots, you know. Is that the next book? <laughs> that's kind of the next book. Pivoting for dummies. The pivoting for dummies. Yeah. Uh, but there's no, so there's no template. And I think for me, it's being graceful with yourself as you're going through the process of the unknown that you've been wanting. 
So, and, um, and I think that that's one of them. And the other, the second piece as well is <clears throat> when, I guess, and this is where my union stuff comes in, where it's like, there's, this is all part of the process. And when something doesn't work out or something works out, um, that work turns out, uh, it goes sideways. You can't, don't be upset with yourself. Don't be, um, uh, don't beat yourself up. Just know that this is part of the process and this is going to be a learning experience to grow. So, um, yeah. I think for me, it's been, it's, so for me, one word, be graceful with yourself as, as you move through this process. I love that. And I, it's going to queue up the question I have for you, Liliana, but as you're sharing that, Alex, I'm thinking about, um, that there's like usually internal resistance and then yes. external resistance to change. Right. Like, so as we make these decisions or tell our teams, Hey, I'm doing this differently. I'm not seeing clients. I'm not in the office or I am. There's always something that shows up. Right, yeah. internally and externally. Of, yes. We've always done it this way. Why yes. are we changing it? Correct. Um, so that popped in, and I'm curious how that showed up in your work as a leader, of like people saying, but we've always done it this way. Why are we changing the schedule or the type of thing that we're doing? Yeah, I know you've done a lot, so. You know, and I think, so even adding to the course that you guys added, right, is the identity piece. Mm -hmm. um, so we get trained to be therapists, and then we create this business. So then we go from I as a therapist to I as an owner. Mm -hmm. And then when we pivot, is then who am I? Mm -hmm. And what would that look like? Um, what would that feel like? Um, what do I need to say? What do I need to name? What is the consistency that we need to have? It's almost like a, as a leader, right? We keep talking about how do I show up for others? What is it that others need for me? And when it's not explicit and when we have a fantasy of what that change would look like, mm -hmm. but we're not even clear. Mm -hmm. And then our the team <laughs> is expecting us to know. It's almost like a parenting role, right? Like, tell me, coach, tell me. <laughs> uh, but we're not even clear somehow. The external is we're not allowed to process. We're not allowed to figure things out. And then part of the identity is who am I? Am I betraying? How am I showing up? But I studied to be a therapist. So what am I supposed to do now? Mm -hmm. um, so I think that for me, as you guys were talking, is the identity piece. Okay. Who am I as things are changing? Mm -hmm. And then the boundaries change, right? Yeah. Of like what to expect of us as leaders could change. Like I'm available, I'm not available. Yeah. I need to take care of myself. I need to take care of my health. Like, yeah. but even if we were on that every 50 minute schedule that Jen, I totally resonate with when you said that. I'm like, I get things done in 50 minute blocks. <laughs> um, uh, maybe that looks different now in yeah. the team or availability of scheduling, right? So yeah, that's kind of showing up in my head too. <laughs> so what would that look like for you, Karen? Oh, well, I, you know, I was thinking about what Jen said about yeah. the team. Um, my team is completely hands off. Like they all do their own thing. And so, um, I'm about to go through a transition, which you'll all learn about later. But, you know, I think it'll look a little less impactful because I haven't been in a space and I'm not in it. Um, yeah. That the shift that's about to happen will probably have less ripple effect mm -hmm. than if I was like in a brick and mortar every day and all of a sudden we're like not seeing each other. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, I think there's still that internal resistance and anxiety that shows up. Like, what's the team thinking? I give myself that grace <laughs> because. Yeah. All of us are in the middle of transitions as we're filming this right now. So it's really interesting yeah. timing because we did not plan that no. this way. <laughs> we but did yeah. but it, but it, you know, it, it is, it, it's a good representation of something else that I thought of is that we, I mean, we all know each other. We are all, we all have a good dose of anxiety. We think things through when we plan yeah. and we try to figure out every angle before it happens. Right. Yeah. But then there's some, there's, there's some point where either intentionally or unintentionally, it's just a risk. It's just a straight up risk. <laughs> and you have to just leap in and do it and crack your fingers and hope for the best. Yes. And and then you have to be graceful and humble enough to be able to come back and say, wow, I did not go as planned. I'm going to backtrack a little bit because that was a mistake. You know, so I mean, there's for a lesson. It could be a lesson. Yeah. It could be a lesson. Yes. yes. <laughs> nice reframe. <laughs> um. Yeah, but it is. There's so much that just feels incredibly risky and you just have to really, you know, we all talk about how you hear about, you just have to take the leap. You just have to like trust in the process and all of that. And that's really hard to do when yeah. you have so much at stake and as a leader, it's not only just you at stake. Like you, you make a mistake it that it could really impact the lives of others now that are, yeah. So 
anytime that I hear like, oh, you just have to take the lip, it, my inner child comes out and I want to say things that I know I cannot say out loud, right. but right. my faith will mm-hmm. make too. <laughs> <laughs> my faith doesn't lie, really. Yeah. Uh, well, and then not taking the risk. What, one of the things that will come into fruition as I share more of my journey is I actually identified scarcity and not making a change. Mm. So scarcity was staying in my comfort zone. Yeah. Scarcity right. was leaning on something that wasn't actually serving me the same way. Right. So as I change up my business structure, which you all learn about later in a different video, that's my conclusion. I'm like, mm-hmm. oh, if I don't make the change, I'm actually subscribing to scarcity, which yes. is therapists yeah. and financial therapists yes. feel very hypocritical and yet. <laughs> right. So here we are. <laughs> And even as you say that, right? I'm like, well, so we went to a master's program where we learned how to learn theory, but then there was no training in regards to how do you transition? How do you pivot? How do you normalize the pivoting? Uh, what is the identities, the developmental identities that you're going to go through? And even as we say, you know, how to be gentle, like I still do not know that. There's times that I can have myself and give myself grace. There's times that I have to text all of you and say, Ugh. Uh, <laughs> told me I'm gonna it. Yeah. Um. And, and so, and being stuck, because when you said that, that I was like, I had no template in my family on how to run a business mm-hmm. or how to pivot. Yeah. Um. And society tells me you fail instead mm-hmm. of reframing. Did I fail, or what did I learn from this? Right. And, and what is it that I'm gonna take, and what I'm willing to try next time? That's mm-hmm. the risky part. Yeah. And I mean, look at this, you know, we as therapists are so hard on ourselves and our business. And I think a lot of it is because we are not trained in business. We kind of learn this trial by fire as we went. So mistakes, we're good with that at this point because we've made a lot of them. But you know, <laughs> you, I mean, you have to be to get to kind of where we all are professionally with our businesses. I mean, it's a given. We make tons of mistakes. But like most of our text messages start with Ugh, or some version of it. But if you look at bigger corporations, yeah. you know, they they quote unquote fail and pivot and rebrand themselves and reorganize all the time. It's just a course of business. Yeah. And I I mean, I don't know, I'm not in their houses, but I don't think that they're all I failed. I've let everyone down. I'm a terrible person. They're like, no, hey, this isn't working. We're gonna change this. But that's we're where the therapy this. comes in. Right. We went and learned in our master's program that if we're not accessible. Exactly. Right. right. If, if you are abandoning. Yes. Clients or colleagues, yes. colleagues or the expectation of you or the image that they created. Of you. Right. right. So that master program, that system set us up to fail. Because we were we were meant to be servants of this, right? We are here to serve. Which is what we all want to do. Right. This is the thing. We all want to do this. We want to be and, accessible to process. Yes. We don't want to serve. I have a problem mm-hmm. from a backpack think like serving I don't like it either but I remember in my graduate program that is what we heard over and over and over and at some point it was like okay I am here to support I am here to help people grow but at what point do I draw the line where this is impacting me you know oh so you didn't matter you have to sacrifice well I I think you bring a good point Leanna Mm -hmm. I mean being a BIPOC individual immigrant um there's us there aside from the, well, the narrative the narrative that we have as therapists and pivots there's also a cultural piece that we we have to acknowledge um so when i say loyalty there's the loyalty to the role but there's also a loyalty that comes with culture okay. that you stick and you stay and you fulfill and you provide service until the day you die okay. pretty much and it's like you're breaking the pattern by pivoting and yes. there's that that um it, so it's not just cognitive it's also emotional yeah. based on our cultural you know upbringing and so mm-hmm. when you're saying that i'm you know that that's the how do i pivot and align and honor myself in the process in the role as a director owner and as a human as a latino as an immigrant with all the narratives that come with it and and it's just it's it's a whole it's an uh, alchemical transformational process not just out here but in here as well 
So that's why I say it has to be very graceful with yourself because um, it's almost like an existential crisis. <laughs> and they can't even show I can't. <laughs> Because, yeah, yeah, you're right. But I'm realizing in my family, my family is all about pivoting. So I actually had a little bit different experience. Yeah. You know? uh, not for us. Not for not us. Not I don't think my family championed it or deterred. It, they just kind of like, you do you. Like, yeah. independence. Um, yeah. 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 Not no, for me. Not for me. Uh, yeah. 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 This is, I mean, we don't have all the answers. Right. We're just talking, right. Yeah. Like, yeah. candidly, is that. Yeah. Figuring out what's showing up, knowing that we just want to normalize this for any of you that yes. are thinking of a pivot. We're always, we're always talking about pivots. Almost every video we say the word pivot. I yeah. know, but it's because we're doing that. So we're practicing what we're talking about. Right. Um, yeah. And just know that it is emotional. You want to do it alone. A part of the reason we make these videos is that you feel like it's been normalized and that you have people alongside you that are like, yep, we're doing it too. Um, so I'm sure we'll have even more insight as we go through this next season. Yes. That's the word that keeps popping yes. us. We're about to hit a different season, literally and figuratively. So going to the fall, which always has this different energy. Yes. Right? Yeah. yeah. Versus mm -hmm. summer energy where we are right now. So it, it feels very poetic that we're here at the end of July, supposed later, <laughs> uh, filming this going, okay, feels like summer's almost over. Yeah. Maybe that's just me. But yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. just know that we're talking about having grace, that we don't have to be 15 minute time blocks anymore to recognize the culture and where we come from and how we want to break different norms. I'm um, hearing all of that from all of you. Any final thoughts for the, the audience as we talk about pivots and changing our leadership and how we show up? I'd say, again, reach out to your soul tribe. <laughs> um, there, have your soul tribe. Um, gosh, there's days that I'm like, <laughs> Uh, <laughs> wait, and then what, how can we support you? Just listen to me. <laughs> Help me right. process yeah. this. Uh, have your soul tribe. Have your soul tribe because um, you're not in it alone and have somebody you can bounce your, you know, your ideas from and, and be, give yourself the opportunity as well. If you can't, um, uh, those uh, we're supposed to have like a working zoom and then it turned out to be a processing zoom. Why? Because it, of what's going on. And so give yourself that grace to take a time out to process this. Love that. Jen, what would you add? Um, you know, um, it, it, I love that you use the word grace because that's the word that pops into my head over and over and over when I'm thinking about these things. So something that you've heard me say is, you know, really keep in your mind as you're, you know, pivoting or transitioning or in the, you know, changing seasons that, you know, your business can fail your business can go through ups and downs that does not mean that you personally as a person right. have to fail like you you and your business are separate you you are a big part of your business you're the vision but your business is numbers and analytics and a whole bunch of things so yeah so don't adopt that as your truth Yes. Sort of, right, right. Don't internalize, you know, a business decision being a failure as like a personal failure. It's something yeah. that you learn for. It's a lesson. It's a growth opportunity. What for you, Liam? Um, see the business as um, an identity. And, you know, we grew up, we are children and we're constantly developing. We go from childhood to pre-adolescent to adolescent to adulthood. Um, and then there's so many other phases. So see the business exactly as that, developmental. And it's going to keep pivoting and it's going to keep adapting to what is needed. Um, so don't see it as one identity. Don't see it as just one stage, horizontal, mm -hmm. because that's not what life is. Um, be okay with change and if not, reach out. Normalize it. But more importantly, it's not failing. It's learning. It's a learning curve. Um, yeah, that that will be it. It's a learning curve. It reminds me of that viral image where it's like, I got this. I don't got this. I got this. I don't got this. Yeah. Right, like up down. <laughs> 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 so I think that would be my final thoughts. Is that when we come on these videos, we're still sometimes just figuring out what's going to come out of us right. when we're sharing. Um, and I think the community sees us as very polished leaders and just know it's messy. It's <laughs> messy. It's messy. Uh, <laughs> no, I didn't see that. <laughs> but yeah, that, that's maybe how you see it. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, cool. Um, but just know that it's, it's emotional as we've all echoed today and that when you see us come on these videos is with every heartfelt intention yes. that you have something to ponder yourself because we don't have it all figured out. We just want to talk about it. Um, so 
my head it's like it's not perfect it's not polished it's just real yes and so hopefully you're finding this valuable um i'm sure we have other topics coming but just know that this is one that was really at the forefront of our mind as we enter this new season and stay tuned for more we'll see you next time